I think it was really Ashton has too much of this this fan thing, like a cult leader. And oh my gosh, Steve Jobs has always been the great top people, and could not see that he was he had a lot of flaws in knowing how to run things and execute and make products that were worthwhile during his time there. So you're saying the movie over glorifies Steve? Sure. Jobs. Yeah, it didn't talk about a lot of things when Steve was was. It made it look like he's forced out of the company for no good reason, and it doesn't get into what the reasons really were. They didn't talk to any any of the people. Um, it's you know what was really going on in the company that was bad at the time. And you know you have to realize that Steve kept trying to make his own computer. My Apple II took the. Uh, by the way. He didn't take me to a homebrew computer club. <laughs> you know, I had been there. There were people in the club that had my computer that I'd helped them build that were using it. I'd given it out for free to everyone before Steve even knew it existed. So this was these kind of things are all phony. Like he's the one directing all of the wisdom and intelligence, and it was really coming from other people. He was a good filter for it. Is better in these time frames. He, he failed with the Apple III. He failed with the Lisa. He failed with the Macintosh. People don't know from that movie how deeply the Macintosh failed. How deeply our stock slid down. How we had to re. Group quickly and re and build a Macintosh market over three years while we had huge revenues from the Apple II, and how Steve was trying to kill the Apple II in a lot of ways and do very unfair, unrealistic things to it. That's not known. There are obviously so many twists and turns to the Apple story that I think would be impossible to get in a two hour movie. Let's talk about Ashton's portrayal of Steve. Did he get that right? Um, I actually liked his portrayal of it, and I felt it was a good choice to pick somebody who was into technology. You know, it's just he didn't understand the, he wasn't there living those times, or I think it would have been, a lot of things would have been portrayed very differently. And um, I don't know, it was the producer. I think Ashton was probably in a producer role as well in coming out with how Steve should treat other people. Um, so what did he do right? Like, like what did he do very, wrong? There were very good, intelligent people that were, that were, did not deserve the demeaning character that Steve put on them. Mike Markla, who funded us, he was Steve's mentor. He was the one that taught Steve how to run and build a company. It wasn't vice versa, you know? It wasn't like Steve's working the deals on this guy who's been around the block for, you know, a lot of time. Is Ashton overglorifying John, John Is Ashton over glorifying Steve Jobs, or has the world over in the glorified time, in, the, in the time frame that people are interested in, the early days of the company, yes, he's over glorifying him and not getting to the truth. And it's based upon the great Steve Jobs that came back mature, capable of executing. That means actually accomplishing visions. Steve had great vision of things like the Macintosh. By the way, in the movie, they showed Steve like so important and Jeff Raskin running our Macintosh group as being kind of nothing. Jeff Raskin's the one who took us to Xerox Park Center. He's the one that, that had been, you know, taught classical music in, in universities as well as was a technician. He brought human versus technology, human over technology into Apple and into the world. And he was treated like so shabbily in the movie. No, I didn't like seeing a lot of people I know not get the respect that they deserve in their relationship of really giving Steve Jobs the goods. What about Josh Gad's portrayal of you? It's not you often what, you get to see yourself he, played in a movie. I, the way, I think the way the routine, the, the role was written, um, there were a lot of things in there that never happened. Me leaving Steve Jobs, you know, and saying so. But, um, but I think he played it very well. Yeah, I think he acted well. I was glad they chose a good actor. As a matter of fact, most of the actors in there, I thought, did a very good acting job. And that means a lot to me when I see a movie. It just, something about, it wasn't a story of one strong conflict and suspense. And you're waiting for the end that really got to me that made me, you know, want to recommend it more than mild entertainment okay and I did laugh at places oh, boy I boy did I laugh when they made a joke about I was carrying my own weight because I was skinny back in those <laughs> days but I laughed because I like good jokes it's good humor I even laughed when I told some Polish jokes okay so for the most part Steve liked uh, the acting but don't even get him started about the script I got an early script I read it my wife read it and we were kind of abhorred by it and if somebody else has started a creative process of designing something, writing a script, you don't come in and, oh, push them out. And, it's got to be this way. There's no way you can correct it. It was a hard job. Secondly, I dis just did not like certain things in that script at all. Some because they were so wrong from the truth. Why not so tell them they're wrong? Why not tell them? Um, I have a very busy life, and it came at a very busy time in my life when I traveled the world giving speeches, hardly ever home. So I also had a busy time, but they, were, they wanted to pay money. 
And so did the Sorkin film. Right. And so you, you know are what? consulting on Aaron Sorkin's film, which has not has not been I, titled. It's in process. I am consulting, and you know what? There's, as far as I know, there's no script written. In other words, they will take the input, the input from the first-hand sources, and create a script from it, rather than a first-hand source coming in. Can you modify our script a little here and there? That wouldn't have worked. It was. So I really how is that like project it. going? So you know, so and you far. know what? You know what? Some some I, I saw a trailer about the Ashton Kutcher film, mm -hmm. and it was so wrong and backwards of Steve directing something towards me when it was really the opposite in real life and you know what and I commented about that and he, he headline said that I, I said the movie was crappy I never said that once because I don't say it till I see it and and so Ashton Kusher said that I was saying the movie was lousy because I was being paid by the other one you know what I don't do things my principles aren't affected by money in the movie you'll see that there were a whole bunch of people that helped us start this company hung around the garage and all those people got Steve Jobs in the movie Steve Jobs it was really not Steve Jobs himself um, said they don't get any stock and we at the top get all of it so you know what I did? I took my stock and I gave them huge blocks. I'm, I'm not, I, I'm not right, you gave people so your huge. own stock. We know but, that story really well. What words do you have for Ashton Kutcher? What would you like to say to him? You know what? I'm really easy to get a hold of. He could have called me and consulted over the phone anytime. I got from Daniel Kotke, who's a star in the film and a consultant, I got the, the email address of his management company to email him to tell him I had not said that the movie was lousy because mm -hmm. I hadn't seen it, you know? And I never got an email back. All right, so we got the script down and the acting, but um, how about Steve Jobs, the man? He always took the role of you have to somehow think higher level thoughts and put this air of mystique on, which is vision. And it's got to be, but it, and is your vision accurate? Uh, he was not that good at executing, in other words, coming up with a vision that was makeable into profits today. A product that people wanted enough that a company could, be, could make a profit on it. He wasn't until he returned. Then he was more stable and exercised and into the operations of a company. Then was he a he understood visionary? It. Well, he was a visionary before. No, he was a visionary with, with the Macintosh and seeing this was the future. You know what? There were a whole bunch of us that were the visionaries. Jeff Raskin, who took us there, and Bill Atkinson. Mm -hmm. And we all saw it and said, oh, my, once you have this, you'll never go back. How can we make it at a price it can sell? The Lisa cost 20000 of today's dollars, mm -hmm. $10,000 then. It's shown in the movie. That's too much for a personal computer. If you wait a few years, the price has come down, and now it's affordable. And we kind of gave Microsoft the idea to do it once it was affordable. He's the greatest technology leader of, of, our, of our lives. I think he did a lot to improve my life and your life and uh, deserves that credit. That's, when Steve Jobs came back to Apple from that point on, um, yes, he knew how to execute, how to run a company, and how to make products that people wanted and that were good. And it was still some time before he had that big success with the, the iPod, and it was going open. So, I, no, so I, I, I really admire Steve Jobs. I just don't think the movie um, is, is accurate the way it portrays his relationship with others.